Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are going to be performing a fundamental stock analysis of Smith & Wesson Brands, Inc., ticker symbol SWBI. So Smith & Wesson is a potentially controversial business. However, it's a business that's been very requested by subscribers, and it's also a company that Norbert Liu has also taken a recent position in in the past quarter. Even though it's a small position, Norbert Liu is a very respected value investor who's been extremely concentrated over the years. In his self-described words, he invests in the style of Charlie Munger, and he's got the praise of Joel Greenblatt saying that he's truly an investor you'd be comfortable investing money with. So when he makes a position, regardless of the sizing, it probably means that the company is at least an interesting opportunity to look at. And we have the added benefit with Smith & Wesson here that since Norbert Liu made his initial purchase into the business, their stock price has come down quite a bit. The low in that quarter was around $13.5, and currently they are trading for $10.32 per share. So over the past year, Smith & Wesson is down over 50%. Over three years, however, even being down 50% in the last year, Smith & Wesson is up over 14.5%. Over 10 years, their share price is about flat. Going back almost 18 years prior to the global financial crisis, Smith & Wesson has actually done pretty well. They've compounded at a rate of 10% annually, but their stock price has been very cyclical over this time. They've had massive drawdowns where they've traded for below $2 or $3 per share. In 2019, they traded for about $6 per share, and they've also had these big highs nearing the $30 mark. Currently, Smith & Wesson is trading about $0.40 cents over their 52-week low, and they're down over half from their 52-week high. They have a lot of short interest around the business. About 9% of their shares outstanding are currently sold short, and they're a pretty small business compared to what we've been looking at typically. They have a $472 million market cap. So for more background about the company, Smith & Wesson Brands, Inc. is a U.S.-based leader in firearms manufacturing. It operates under one reportable segment, Firearms, which includes firearm distributions and manufacturing services. The company manufactures handguns, long guns, sporting rifles, shooting gear, and suppressor products. The firm's brand portfolio consists of Smith & Wesson, M&P, Thompson Center Arms Performance Center, and Gemtech, which are used for defense, law enforcement, hunting, and sporting purposes. The company operates internationally with the majority of income generated by the U.S. market from its handgun products. Smith & Wesson is a very old business. They were founded in 1852 and are based in Springfield, Massachusetts. However, the company is currently in a transition process where they're actually going to be moving most of their operations to Tennessee. For our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Smith & Wesson based off of their business fundamentals. This analysis is still an evolving process. It will continue to improve and get better over time. And it's also an opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. There are two major reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And the second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for companies that are averaging returns on capital that are 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based on the overall quality of the business. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, Smith & Wesson was earning below average returns on capital. They earned slightly above average returns on capital in fiscal 2020, which ended at the beginning of May of 2020. So really since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns, Smith & Wesson saw just a huge spike in their business. They earned over 100% returns on capital in fiscal 2021. And even though that came down in fiscal 2022, it was still very high returns on capital. Over the last 12 months, this has still come down. Their returns on capital are coming back down to earth, but they're still producing 40% returns on capital. What this signals to us is that the company is cyclical. They've had this big high post-pandemic, but in their good years, they earned very high returns on capital. Averaged out in a given year over this time, they're averaging about 37.5% returns on capital. So although they've only recently been near that over the last 12 months, they've had big booms above that and low returns on capital below that. So keep that cyclicality in mind, but this is going to be a massive check to start off here on metric number one. Their returns on capital are about five and a half times better than that of an average business. Even though it's pretty lumpy here, they're a very capital efficient business. 
Next up for metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows to have grown over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for a check, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time, they've increased their revenues. Their earnings are also up. However, even though they've grown their cash flows from fiscal 2018 to fiscal 2022, over the last 12 months, they've only produced about $6 million of free cash flow, which is actually the worst that they've done over any time period since 2018. So that does mean that their free cash flows are down over this time. So this is going to be an X here on metric number two. Metric number three, here we're building off of what we just learned in metric number two, but we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at the company on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. During this time, we saw that their earnings are up and here we can get clued in on the fact that their earnings per share are up at a rate that's faster than their overall earnings, which means that Smith & Wesson has been buying back shares over this time. In fact, Smith & Wesson has repurchased about 15% of their shares outstanding, which is fantastic if you've been a long-term shareholder in this business, because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a company buys back shares by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which ultimately increases your percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to. So Smith & Wesson has both increased their earnings and they've increased the percentage of the earnings that you're entitled to as a shareholder if you've been a long-term shareholder in this business. So this is a strong sign to see here and this is a check on metric number three. Metric number four is gonna be very similar. Here we're looking for five-year free cash flow per share growth. Again, from fiscal 2018 to fiscal 2022, Smith & Wesson grew their free cash flows per share. But over the last 12 months, their free cash flows per share are down. They're only earning about 13 cents of free cash flow per share over this time. So even with their 15% buybacks over this period, this is still going to be an X on metric number four. Another thing we want to note here is that over an extended period of time, a business's earnings and free cash flow should be roughly the same. In excess of 10-year periods, five years is not necessarily enough data here. But it looks like for the most part, this has been the case, although there have been some differences in earnings and cash flows within the recent year. Next up for metric number five, we want their net debt, which are long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that Smith & Wesson has produced over the past five years. So currently, Smith & Wesson has negative net debt, which means that after paying off all of their liabilities, they're left over with cash. So currently, they're actually sitting on $68 million of cash. And over the last five years, they've earned $558 million of free cash flow. So that is a massive check here on metric number five. The business's balance sheet is in a very healthy position as they have plenty of cash left over after paying off all of their debt. And they've been strongly cash flow generative over this time. In all five of these years, they've been earning positive free cash flows. And it's great that the business is able to free up their free cash flows and their free cash flow doesn't have to go to paying or resurfacing debt. This is really important because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business. Free cash flow can be used to buy back shares, pay dividends, reinvest back in the business, pay down debt, or make acquisitions. So not having to pay down debt frees up their free cash flows here. And a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment date, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. Great to see that the business is strongly cash flow generative. Finally, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury and give us a reason to potentially be interested in the business. So we're using total enterprise value rather than the business's market cap because total enterprise value is gonna take into account both their net debt position and their market cap and will give us a picture of the business that's more reflective of economic reality than market cap will alone. It's more similar to as if Smith & Wesson were a private company. So currently Smith & Wesson has a total enterprise value of $404 million. We learned that over the last five years, they produced $558 million of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, they're earning about $111 million in a year. So when we divide their $111 million of average free cash flow, by their $404 million total enterprise value, that is gonna give us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 27.5%. So that is massively above that 5% mark we were looking for. This is almost without a doubt one of the highest average free cash flow to enterprise value yields of almost any business in the market right now. This is a massive check on metric number six. However, it's not all sunshine and roses here 
because over the last 12 months, Smith & Wesson has only earned $6 million of free cash flow. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield, when we divide their $6 million of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $404 million total enterprise value, that is only going to give us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 1.5%. That is well below where the 10-year treasury is at currently and well below that 5% mark we're looking for. Again, this business has been categorized by boom and bust cycles. And although their average free cash flows over this time look like they're giving us a huge yield here, their current free cash flows are saying something on the total opposite end of the spectrum. To really get a better sense of the business, you're gonna to wanna to do more homework here to investigate the company farther and understand why their free cash flows have come down so much. From my own background understanding of the business, it's likely a result of increased expenses in the business, as well as a decrease in demand, coupled with some one-time expenses from primarily moving their operations from Massachusetts and Missouri to a new campus in Tennessee. But again, that's just a limited understanding of the business. And to learn more, you really wanna do your own homework here. We'll talk about resources that are appropriate for that in just a little bit. Lastly, here we're looking at Smith & Wesson's dividend profile. Currently, they have a dividend yield of about 3.9%. And so even though they have this high dividend yield, it's easy to make mistakes by blindly chasing dividend yields. So it's important to stop and look at the fundamentals of a business to determine whether their dividends are supported and healthy or not. For Smith & Wesson, over these last five fiscal years, they've had more than enough free cash flows to pay out their dividends. They started paying out dividends in fiscal 2021 and that continued in fiscal 2022. However, their free cash flows have dropped over the last 12 months. And during that time, they're only earning about 13 cents of free cash flow per share. It would be interesting to hear management's perspective here and to understand in more detail what they're planning to do with this dividend going forward. For a business like Smith & Wesson, we would only want this company to be paying out dividends when their dividends are well supported by the business's cash flows. And so while this has been the case previously, this potentially would be no longer the case, at the very least temporarily. So again, it would be interesting to get management's perspective of how they're approaching capital allocation here. Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Smith & Wesson. Here we're starting with their average free cash flows over the past five years. So again, this time period has been categorized by a huge boom in the business. So this is potentially higher than what their free cash flows have been in other times over their history. So we'll be trying to compensate for that in our model overall. If we assume a growth stage where the business's average free cash flows decline by about 2.5% each year over the next 10 years, and then using a terminal stage where each of the next 10 years out after that, so projecting 20 years out in the future total, the business is declining by 5% each year. Then if we add in their tangible book value today, if you're looking for a 10% rate of return from Smith & Wesson, then using these assumptions, which you need to confirm or disconfirm for yourself, whether these are going to be accurate or not going forward to project Smith & Wesson, that a fair value for the business would be about $19.65 per share. So that would give you quite a bit of margin of safety in that current price. If these assumptions are reasonable here, keep in mind that this would be including their dividends and that really this is just used to give us a baseline projection into the future. You'd be able to better fine tune this model through farther research into the company and learning about them in more depth. So in summary, Smith & Wesson checks the box on four out of six metrics. Their business has been categorized by these historical boom and bust cycles. And recently they've been riding the back of a big high in their business from strong post-pandemic consumer demand. Over the last 12 months, they're earning about 40% return on capital and averaged out in the last five years, they're earning about a 37.5% return on capital. Their revenues and earnings are up over this time. However, their cash flows are down for a number of different reasons, although those potentially may only be temporary, and that's something you want to research farther as you learn more about the business. They've also repurchased about 15% of their shares outstanding, and they're sitting on a cash cushion of about $68 million here. Again, because they were at a very high high for their business, they have a very huge average free cash flow at an enterprise value yield currently but things have come down to earth as their free cash flows have dropped. And over the last 12 months, their current free cash flow to enterprise value yield is below the yield of the 10-year treasury right now. So Smith & Wesson could potentially be a mixed bag as it's gone from very high highs to very low lows in terms of its free cash flows numbers. Also, they started paying out a dividend in fiscal 2021, but because of their low free cash flows over the last 12 months, you're gonna to wanna to understand what management is gonna do about that dividend going forward. Then we learned that using a discounted cash flow model based off of historical growth assumptions for their free cash flows and compensating for the cyclicality of this business, 
that currently it looks like there's quite a bit of margin of safety in the company. If you're satisfied with a 10% rate of return going forward, then a reasonable price for this company would be about $19 per share. So there's quite a bit of delta between where their current stock price is and that $19 per share mark. It's really worth noting that the business might be more unpredictable than what that model can reflect. Given the cyclical nature of their operations based off consumer demand, so that discount cash flow model is only used to give us a potential baseline projection into the future. It's up to you to do your own homework to understand if that model is going to be truly applicable or not for Smith & Wesson going forward. So keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly registered financial professionals. If you're interested in learning more about Smith & Wesson brands, and personally I am, I would highly recommend starting with their filings. You can read through their 10Ks to get a historical sense of the business and their operating performance over time. Management will also lay out some of the potential risk that the company faces. You'll be able to understand in more depth the environment that the company operates in, and what are some of the factors that impact the business. And you can get a better sense for both the competence and character of management and understand how they're approaching strategy and capital allocation going forward. So as a value investor, you ultimately want to come to understand a business as if you owned 100% of it, and you can understand the essence of that business and truly know all of its ins and outs and understand what's important and what's not for the company. So by researching the business farther, you'll be able to learn both the quantitative and the qualitative aspects that are really gonna determine the overall intrinsic value of the company. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Smith & Wesson Brands, ticker symbol SWBI. As mentioned, this was a very popular subscriber request. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Smith & Wesson with me, and have a great day.